Hi, I'm Jenna Kelly with the Green Girl Minute, and I'm so thrilled to be here with Julianne Struva from the National Snow and Ice Data Center at the University of Colorado Boulder, and she's a research scientist there, and she's going to talk to us today about her work. How's it going today? It's great. I'm very happy to be here in Aspen today and actually to learn more about our forests at the symposium. It's been great for me. It really has helped connect the dots between forest health and climate change. And I know you do research on sea ice. Is that correct? Well, I basically study changes in the snow and the ice cover of our planet. Um, and my focus area lately has been on the sea ice cover because that is one of the changes that is happening on our planet so rapidly that it's a really big kind of become our poster child for climate change. And uh, we're seeing amazing changes happening in our CS cover today that then affect everything else that we're seeing here with the forest, too, because it helps to amplify the warming that we're already seeing because of greenhouse gases. And so that further leads to changes in vegetation cover and precipitation patterns. So you really have been able to see the effects of climate change firsthand through your research? Yeah, when I started my research back in uh, the 1990s, I didn't necessarily believe that we were affecting our climate yet with greenhouse gases. But then, you know, just through the time over the last couple decades and, and seeing the changes, especially the last five or six years, I've become convinced that something is happening in our climate system that is forcing these large changes and forcing the sea ice cover to basically shrink to the point where it's probably going to become ice free in summers within the next couple decades. Wow, just the next couple decades? Yeah, I think it might be that soon, yes. Oh my gosh, that's a scary thought. And I also know you become involved with Aselli, is that correct? Well, I've been a member of, uh, or alumni of our day, I guess, for the last couple of years. I've given talks at the events. And we're now focusing on trying to bring about some more climate and energy literacy so that people better understand the changes that the scientists are seeing and finding a way to communicate it to youth um, and get it into popular media so that people really understand what the scientists have been talking about for quite some time now. So it's getting that message out, making it, you know, entertaining and fun and cool and also people can digest it. It's not too hard technical information. Yeah, I mean, typically scientists, we're not that great sometimes at communicating our science on a level that the general public can really get. And so finding a way to sort of bridge that gap between, you know, peer-reviewed science literature that goes into great detail about what's happening in our climate system to put it into a way that, that everybody can get it, and especially the youth, which is really going to help you know, propel us to make some changes that we need to make. Very true. And are you going to come to Arde again this summer in August? I'm planning on it, yeah. Great. Well, hope to see you there. And thanks again for talking to us today. It was great to hear from you. And we'll have more with the Green Girl Minute in just a moment.